go. Hey, everybody, and welcome to session six of Star Trek Bastet. If this is your first time joining us, hello, welcome. This is a time traveling skeleton crew on a Prometheus class. Uh, we're using the Star Trek Adventures rule set by Modifius Entertainment, and uh, let's just say it's a lot of fun. If you're into Star Trek, you're into role playing, definitely give it a look see. Uh, one thing I would say is that uh, you don't really need to have enjoyed last sessions or caught last VODs to enjoy this one, but you'll probably get some greater context if you do. And what I would say is that the VODs are on YouTube and uh, most of the popular podcast solutions. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, announcement wise, uh, tomorrow I'm starting up two new games. Uh, one is the Black Crusade Warhammer 40k game. That's going to be at 2 p.m. Uh, you will see uh, Mr. Wolf down there. Uh, he's going to be one of the players in that. And then uh, at 9 p.m., we're going to have the All Romulan game. And you will see Mr. Brian in that. Ooh. But uh, that's enough about me. Let's hear from our players. So, uh, Mr. Captain, what say you? Hey, everyone. My name is Alex. I am playing Lieutenant Abasi, the Cation acting captain for the Bastet. And then Nikhil. Hey everyone, my name is Nikhil, and I play Lieutenant Alexio, who is a Cameloid shapeshifter. That would be you, Brian. All right, I am Brian. I am at Mind Over Brian on Twitter and on Twitch. Although on Twitch I spell it with a zero, and I am playing uh, Lieutenant Baylor Droxine, our erstwhile pirate, uh, not pirate pilot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, having yeah. one of those days, uh, pilot, and uh, I mean, technically, I led the mutiny. So, I don't know. That sounds pretty pirate to me. Anyway, Wolf, you're up next. Hey, everybody. My name is uh, Dare Wolf. I am playing Lieutenant Kalos Cater, the Chief Medical Officer. Happy to be here. And certainly, last but not least, we have Matt, Mr. Matthew. Hello, everyone. My name is Matthew. I'm playing uh, Lieutenant Thavarin, uh, a Benzite. And apologies if uh, I cut out because my internet connection is terrible right now. Hmm. Well, uh, we'll keep an eye on it. But uh, yeah, if you don't know me already, I'm ELH, the Game Master. Let's just run our uh, quick little stinger of an intro. All right, welcome back, everybody. So something I like doing for Star Trek Adventures in particular is having the players do an opening monologue. And uh, I believe, Captain Abasi, you have quite the doozy of one today. Yes, I do. Acting Captain's Log, Stardate 51894.5. It has been roughly 18 days now since we encountered the offshoot of the Nexus Ribbon and started this hopping through time. At current, we've remained in an altered version of the 2374 that we know. Bastet has been attempting to keep our impact to this timeline at a minimum level, remaining under cloak as often as we're capable, and avoiding any encounters with either the Dominion or the Federation. As such, we've really only responded to instances where our own safety or matters of a potential return to a corrected time frame present themselves to us. In the last such example, we not only encountered a former member of the Q, Ensign V, but also a macro-galactic entity. Uh, an encounter in which I entirely failed my duties to this crew as its captain. Lieutenant Relor, I dare say her possession, seems to have left a lasting effect on her. Uh, Lieutenant Cater has done a noteworthy job in stabilizing what could have been a deadly situation. Still, she's without sight. Though she insists on taking her station every day, she does seem to need to lean into the rest of the crew to help get her around the ship. In the meantime, Lieutenant Tamarochka and Ensign V have both been working on experimental modifications to the ship's main deflector array. It seems that Ensign V's approximate knowledge of many things 
extends to temporal mechanics. Despite Lieutenant Thaverin's arguments that the Tachyon Inversion Manifold was never meant to be used in such a method, V and Tamarokshka are both insistent that it will work as they say it will, and give us at least at least one jump through, t through time. On a personal note, I am questioning now just what my authority as captain actually is to the rest of this crew. I've had instances of actions being taken without my consent, or even my knowledge until after it's been done, unable to keep the crew from being hurt. And now, as Lieutenant Droxine has shown, even when I do settle upon a decision, I'm pretty much told, and I quote, to shove it up my cat ass. At times like this, I wish I had someone to speak to, someone to get advice from. If everyone simply does as they please, we're never going to get home. I wonder if this is an instance where, as my stepmother would say, I need to show some claw and fang. I swear, if I didn't know better, I'd think that woman was Kazinti, not Kation. Perhaps this concern is why I've been taking to a project of my own without letting anyone else know. I was tempted to lock out the Alpha Section's engineering bay, but that might draw too much attention, and once again have somebody on the crew tell me I'm not allowed to do what I'm trying to do. I've almost got the system worked out. When it's ready to undergo operational tests, then I'll share what I've been doing. End log. Mm, very, very mysterious. You may have one momentum for that opening log. So, uh, today, I thought we would actually start in main engineering. And in the main engineering of the Bastet, we see Miss Tamarochka, Tavarin, and Abasi currently discussing the modifications to the deflector and the power systems needed to support it. And I'll start us off by Tamarochka saying, and that is why that if we use a reciprocating dingle arm, we will be able to deal with the sonal sodal replenishing. You do realize that the main deflector, although it was meant to channel more power than any other system on this ship, is not designed to handle the chronometric background radiation interference of the kind of process that you're suggesting we should implement. Oh, so you don't think we can handle little Nova Trunnions or capacitors being uh, subjected to magnetic reluctance? Magnetic? Just made that up. Magnetic reluctance? That, that That's not a thing. Of course it's a thing. It is basis of whole warp core. And she kind of taps the side of the warp core. I, I think you're talking about magnetic resonance frequencies within the containment fields. No, no, that is a separate I thing. It, it, there are two separate things here. Listen, Look, I understand you didn't under, you didn't pass uh, engineering 404 with flying colors. This this is engineering 404 work. I understand. Mm -hmm. So when we end up in some horrible alternate timeline caused by the reverberations through the temporal matrices of our reality, we can blame you for that, right? No, no, no. See, the whole point of this, and she points at a device which is vaguely cylinder shaped. Uh, almost like a storage container that is uh, containing what seems to be sort of this viscous, if not glowing, prismatic fluid. And she, she taps that and goes, No, no, see, this is something V has come up with, and I swear the science checks out. Or at least what I understand checks out. Well, far be it for me to question somebody with approximate knowledge of many things. And, and then That was sarcasm, says, by the way, just so you know. Oh, no, I got that. I was just ignoring you. And Tamarochka looks at Abasi. So what do you think, Captain? The only real question I have is, did you consider the flux magnification rates on any of this? Well, uh, that is actually partially part of the concern. Uh, if we don't use a base plate of pre-famulated antelabs, we could have problem. Do we have any of that currently? Well, yes, very, very easy to replicate. I just needed your permission to do so. Uh, get what you need to proceed. 
Very good. Computer, please generate a base plate of prefamulated amarams. And uh, what appears in the nearby replicator is essentially a golden plate. Not like a, an eating plate, but like a like a pressure plate you might find in Minecraft. Just a flat sheet of gold. And uh, as she goes to pick it up, she sort of looks at Tavarn and goes, Now, do you understand why we need this? Or should I explain this to you as well? Look, I'm sure that given your masterful command of English, you can uh, explain it to the captain. I mean, you don't even know what uh, resonance and what is it, reciprocation, the difference between the two. So go right ahead. I'm sure that it'll be entirely clear. And I think Tamarochka looks at you, Captain, and in native Cation, as in not even translated, in native Cation, she just says, man, he's really upset, isn't he? He just kind of laughs and leans back with a nod of his head. You know that the Universal Translator is still working. I know that you're talking in Cation, but I also know what you're saying. I, I hear it in Andorian. Wait, Andorian, why are you not hearing it in Benzite? I've, I've told you about my father. I was raised on Andoria. You know that. No, actually, um, I don't recall you ever bringing it up. That's because I don't socialize with you for obvious reasons, but regardless, can you just install this prefabulated analab plate and can, we could just die, okay? That's that's what's going to happen when you try to hurdle us through time, so let's just get this over with, all right? And I think, I think Tamarochka in character does crack a smile at that, and she literally goes over to the uh, container of rainbow liquid, lifts it up just slightly and puts the gold plate underneath of it, and goes... All right, all done. I think all we need to do now is hear from the helm to make sure that we are ready to test this thing. And yeah, I think with that, we're actually going to cut to the bridge. Where we see it on the bridge, we see uh, Droxine and R'hllor uh, at their stations at the helm, along with Ensign V uh, over at one of the engineering stations. And the one thing I would say about R'hllor at this point is she may be blind, but she has the um, tactile display that we see uh, Lieutenant Tuvok uh, use in Voyager a few times. So even though she's not really looking at the controls, she is able to pilot with the best of them, I would say. But yeah, as uh, we sort of come into the scene, uh, R'hllor just sort of sighs and says, V... Why the hell are you asking us to do a 360 inverted no spin? And V just sort of says, look, if it, I, you can handle it. It's easy. You, you fly the thing. I mean, she makes an excellent point. You can do it. But why would we do it in reverse is my question. Uh, it looks cooler. Maybe the universe is responding to the coolness of our piloting maneuvers. I don't think time travel works that way. I mean, we don't seem to really understand how time, what time travel works at all, so it's as good a theory as any. Plus, you look cool doing it, and that's what's important. Right, but the only people who are going to see it to begin with are us, so are we just doing it for personal, I, I don't know, what would you call it, a hubris? Didn't didn't you hear that I got the, the captain to permission to, uh, to float a buoy outside the shields? It'll, it should be sucked through the time vortex with us, but uh, it'll also record some sweet, uh, some sweet moves. You're missing my point, though. We're not near any spatial bodies right now. We are literally in the void between stars. There is nothing out here. All it's going to look like is the stars just going whoosh, 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 whoosh. Oh, yeah, we were going to do it on thermal so that we would see... Oh, cool so that instead blues. of it being black and white, it would be shades of oranges and blues going whoosh, 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 whoosh. That's the one, yeah. Mm. Okay, but w I, listen, I, I don't know if you were listening during the 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 briefing, because uh, I wasn't. What? It's not really a test if we can only do it once, right? And R'hllor looks in the general direction of V and says, I don't know. Why don't you ask our expert? Because every time she talks, I get a little nauseous. I, I I can hear you, by the way. I think she's talking to me now. 
And V just scary. sort of sighs and says, look, I, I can hear you. These, the Vulcan ears, mm-hmm. I, I can hear lots of things. That's, that sounds very powerful and I respect it a lot. Should I, should I maybe speak louder so that your nausea gets worse? I would appreciate it if you didn't. So anyway, if you execute this maneuver uh, in a certain way that I've described at least three times, we should be completely okay. And I think R'hllor cracks a rare smile. Like, you haven't really seen her smile since the whole incident, but uh, she cracks a, a very small grin and, set, and almost replies in the same volume. Oh, I see. So um, this is all to show up Droxine. Well, now I'm on board. I am totally on board. <laughs> All right. Well, that's. I'm good. Then we're all on board. I'm also on board for this plan that the Q uh, proposed, and definitely um, not against her. Nope. And I think with that, we're now going to cut scenes to Sick Bay, where uh, walking into Sick Bay is Mr. Alexio. But uh, when you walk in, Alexio, it's not like you expected anyone to be there. And uh, there is only really the skeleton crew of the Bastet, uh, which means that uh, there is no receptionist here in sickbay. But uh, I'm going to let you and Cater figure out the scene from here, because I think you guys had something planned already. So as you walk in, you notice that the light at the um, holodeck is on. Um, and actually over your comm badge, I'm going to be like, I'm in the holodeck. Meet me there. Oh, OK, but sorry to interrupt. And You're I'll... not interrupting. It's fine. Just, just come on in. It's maybe you can help, like you did last time. <laughs> All right. I'll choose to let that slide, and I'll walk in. Um, so, what do I see when I uh, walk so, in? This? As you enter into the holodeck, you actually see a brain, um, and wrapped around the brain, you see a number of like neurodes and little like um, diodes and things like that. And then it's v- very similar to what Jory LaForge wore in uh, Enterprise you see this like, like visor wrapped around the front and Cater is in the midst of like trying to connect like neurons to this device and seeing what would work and allow, you can assume whoever's brain this is to see through it. Um, and as you walk in, I'm just gonna look over and be like, oh, hey, how's it going? I just trying to trying to get Rulor to see again. I, it's not working, but I'm trying. So that's, that's oh. good, yeah. Well, oh. Thank you for working on this. Actually, maybe maybe my issue can wait. Uh, this this is probably so much more important. I I stop what I'm doing, and actually, I've hit a bit of a roadblock and some distractions. I, I mean, another pa- another patient might be beneficial. Um, let's let's take it in my office, and uh, I'll computer save program, and we can walk over to our my office. Then the small holographic room, of course, fades out and goes back to normal as you walk out and into Cater's a, a office. Yeah, and as you pull your attention away from what you were working on, you were so focused that you did not that you didn't realize at first. But like Alexio's form is in Dorian most of the time, but one of his antenna is like not in Dorian. It looks like some kind of insectoid antenna poking up out of his head. That's just like whirling around with with no rhyme or reason. Um, doctor, uh, it might be apparent at this point that I'm experiencing some difficulties maintaining my, my, my base form. It's actually rather embarrassing. I was wondering if um, uh, you, you could give me something to calm my nerves, maybe help me settle back in. Well, I, I, I would be, I would be a liar if I said I understood your species um, the best. But I'm sure I could make some sort of basic scan. However, do, do you think it? Do you think this is more psychological, or do you think this is more physical in nature? I mean, obviously, it's manifesting physically, and I'll sort of mumble off, like ramble for a second, and wait for you to respond. Oh, be honest. At the academy, they would just give me a sedative and run me on my way. Hmm. Well, and I'm 
going to break out a medical tricorder and I'll make a basic scan just to see if there's something physically wrong with him. Uh, yeah. Is there a check I can make for that? Eli? Yeah, certainly. Also, I don't know who it is, but I am hearing a Discord beep every now and again. So just check and see if that's you. But uh, yeah, if you want to do a reason medicine, uh, difficulty of zero here. Oh, let's get some momentum, maybe. Hey, that's three successes, okay. which right. means you get uh, three momentum. You're up to four. Totally cool with that. And uh, if you don't mind me uh, inserting a little bit here, uh, Alexio, sure. I would say that uh, even despite your lack of knowledge, Cater, about cameloids, you've seen this before in other shape-shifting species, like actual changelings, or at least the data on changelings. Something is basically messing with the morphogenic matrix in a way that is not all that uncommon from a flu on Earth. Interesting. I will continue the scan for a little bit longer than is necessary. I'm like, hmm. Hmm. Oh, I, oh dear. It's, it's worse than I thought. What, what, what is it, doctor? Stop, stop it with your dramatics. What's going on? You have the flu. And I'll chuckle to myself a little bit and sit back down in my chair. Uh, the, the what? The flu. It's just a, it's a minor cold. I can give you a, a sedative and send you on your way, but more to the point, how are you? And Cater's going to lean in a little bit, and it's almost kind of awkward in the way that he does it, but he's he's trying to seem like kind of chill himself. He's like, how, how, how are you doing, Alexio? How have you, how have you been? Well, I think the gravity of my our predicament is really sinking in. Since what happened to Lieutenant Riller, it's just been, uh, well, it's been bloody stressful, I'll say. Uh, I don't know if, I don't know if we're going to make it out of this alive. And, and now I, I have the flu. I won't get the flu. I don't, I, I've never been sick before. There is a moment in in the last week or so, there have perhaps been several moments where I, I've wondered the same thing you just mentioned. And perhaps this isn't what a doctor should say to his patient. Oh, yes, the, I'm gonna walk over to the, uh, my little uh, replicator over there. I'm gonna have the computer create like a, just a small little like, I don't know, sedative or something for him. Walk mm -hmm. over and administer it. But I'll, I'll be honest with you, Alexio. I, I realize that I, I joke a lot and have moments of perhaps complete absurdity, but death, dismemberment, and us not making out of this alive is something that is, has been on my mind. But I've come to the conclusion that that's really what we signed up for, isn't it? It's maybe what you signed up for. I I signed up for Starfleet because of the options I had, it was the best one. But I thought I, I you know, be assigned to minor duties here or there. No, never, never. Uh, distinguishing myself too much until I could uh, find a find a find an easy niche for myself. I wasn't expecting to be in a place for long enough where I would start caring about people and would start wanting to help save the ship. I just I just thought that that was only for the John Luke Picards of the world. So oh, you're admitting that you care about us, Alexio. Is that is that true? Uh, geez, well, I suppose it was only inevitable. You can read minds or whatever after all. <laughs> yes. I promise I didn't read your mind on this one. You told me everything yourself. But the dose I just gave you should have you feeling tip top in just a couple of hours. Was there anything else you needed to discuss? 
No, I just, I just wanted to say that I appreciate what you've been doing. And um, even though I make fun of you a lot because you're an easy target, <laughs> we'd, we'd, be, we'd be lost without you. I, I'm not hesitant to say that I think we'd all be lost without each other in general. But it's funny you should mention that. That actually gives me an idea. I must return to the hollow deck immediately. But if you need anything else, don't hesitate to stop by. Cater's going to run out and be like, I figured it out. And I sprint into the hollow deck. Yep. And I'm just going to take a deep breath and get that, that little antenna back to, uh, <laughs> back to, back to normal. Gotcha. All right. Well, at this point, we are now going to cut to the Bastet Bridge a few hours later. Uh, at this point, uh, most of the power players are on the bridge. That means Alexio's here, the captain's here, Tavarin, you're here. Uh, pretty much everybody is here except for uh, Tamarochka and Cater. So, uh, oh, thank you for the sub, by the way. Um, it's one of those things where everything is checking out uh, based on your readouts of the deflector dish. You can engage at any time, and it seems that everybody is just sort of making the motions until the captain feels it is, well, appropriate to engage. Abasi's going to take a minute to look around the bridge, and considering in his mind what it is they're about to attempt. Abasi to Lieutenant Tamarochka. This is Tamarochka. Go ahead. We're about to try out your deflector system. I... Oh, you're actually warning me this time. Very nice of you. I figured after the last <laughs> foible, it would probably be a good idea. Mm. Well, go ahead. I am ready. All right. Bring us up to yellow alert. Bring up the deflector system. All right. So this is going to be um, an extended task, uh, mostly because I think there's parts to this that just doing a, um, you know, a, a single high difficulty task, I don't think that would work as well. Um, so this can be attempted by anybody on the bridge, really. Um, it would just be tailored to you. But uh, the work track on this is going to be just a 12. Uh, the magnitude is only going to be a 3. Uh, however, there is going to be a base difficulty of a four, and there will be one resistance on this. And really what I'm after here is I'm curious to see what each of you would be doing in order to either facilitate the activation of this new technology, or maybe just get a little bit of insight into your characters in terms of, well, what do they think about this technology or what do they think is about to happen kind of a thing. So open floor. Uh, who would like to take a stab at it? I mean, presumably we're going to have to steer the ship into some sort of direction because we can't move through time without movement through space, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I hear there's a there's a fun balletic maneuver that needs to be achieved with the uh, Bastet for us to uh, activate the chronotons or some such. Yeah. So the way that's going to work is that's going to be a daring and a con at difficulty four. And you can be assisted by Relor. However, I will tell you that using Relor as an assist does make your complication range a 17 to 20 because, you know, <laughs> she's blind. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to spend, I'm going to say three of our momentum for an, a couple of extra dice. How do people feel about that? Do it. Go for it. <clears throat> And I, awesome. you know what? Just... I know there's going to be a complication range, but uh, Raylor is good at her job, and I would like her to assist me. If someone could get Raylor, and just so we're clear here, in case Ron, somebody wants to take that clip out of context, blind people are perfectly capable. Raylor is still adjusting <laughs> to it. I just want to be clear on that point before somebody clips me. <laughs> All right. Uh, what will the role be for Raylor? Uh, Daring Con on her part as well. Helm operations. Yeah, most definitely. Excellent. 
Hey, hey, that's four successes already. Uh, let me just double check to see if that zero is a complication. It is not. And then, yeah, I just need to see what... Also One. has... Very nice. That's five successes. So what that means is you actually get a momentum back. And yeah, so Droxina and Lore working together um, through the buoy, quote unquote, that you said you were ejecting. Uh, <laughs> what we see is the Prometheus class Bastet uh, begin to do what is essentially a spiraling motion amongst the stars. And this is to build up uh, potential energy in such a way that it mimics the slingshot effect of a star, like, you know, basically warping at a star, then pulling away the snapback effect. Same sort of thing here. You're just sort of simulating that motion. Mm. And as you do that, go ahead and roll me six challenge die. And we'll see how much work you get done. All right, that is seven. So that is six work done, which means that uh, as this is all happening, uh, Ensign V calls out and goes, yeah, you're doing a good job. A uh, little bit, a little bit more impulse. There you go. A little to the right. Uh, okay, okay, we're good. We're good. And yeah, uh, now Droxine, you can't do it back to back. But who would like to attempt next? I think that. Uh, sorry, Wolf, go right ahead. He's muted. I uh, know, but he, he looked like he was going to say something. I'm mm -hmm. not on the bridge. I was just going to be like Alexio. In your mind, you hear Cater like, you can do it, buddy. Fight through the flu. Do something awesome. I think it's going to be you, Tavarin. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then um, Tavarin is actually going to be immensely concerned regarding the efficacy of this new technology. And he is going to be monitoring that chronometric interference that he mentioned earlier on in engineering. So paying a great deal of attention to the interplay between the power systems that they've constructed and the the tachyons uh, inversion manifold that they've been working on and how that's going to be affecting the surrounding space. So it doesn't result in some kind of, um, I suppose, accidental temporal displacement. Fair enough. Uh, I think on your part, it's going to be a control engineering. And what I would say is you could be assisted by Ensign V if you so wished. Yes, I think that I will. Um, and I suppose that would uh, augmented ability control would apply. It most definitely would. Then I'll give you one to roll one extra dice. Got it. And uh, applicable focus of power systems, transporters and replicators, starship tactical systems. I don't think so. I mean, power systems at the very least. All right, that's four successes. Uh, someone want to grab V. She should be under allies. If you scroll down to the very bottom of the journal tab, there should be Ensign V at the bottom. I, got, I do not have access to her sheet. Oh, um, all right. Well, I guess it's a good thing I said something. Let me see if I can fix that. Uh, do you have access now? Yes, I do. Excellent. And what is she rolling? Uh, it doesn't matter because she's always at a 12. Yeah, if you if you uh, if you look at V's sheet, um, I deliberately put all of her attributes at ten and her uh, disciplines at two because that that seems like approximate knowledge of all things. So, but yeah, uh, with four successes, no five successes because augmented control. Uh, go ahead and roll me the six challenge dice, Tavarin, but you could very literally complete this extended task. All right, that is only three. Uh, work done you would need to get six work total in order to complete this extended task yeah so would anyone mind if i spent those three mo momentum actually i'm using a bridge console so i get one free momentum from all fingers and thumbs there you go so i'll spend that along with two of our momentum if that's okay with everyone to complete the work track mm -hmm. good by me sounds like a plan all right so, uh, all things considered, here's what happens. So, Tavarin, as V is shouting, or not really shouting, but sort of speaking over to Droxine and Relor, being like, hey, you know, do this, do X, do Y. Um, oh, yeah, untapped potential. We need to remember to roll that. 
Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, as you sort of monitor things with Ensign V, you begin your own, hey, threat. Uh, you begin your own sort of uh, interjections, as it were. And as you guys reach sort of a fever pitch where V's like, no, 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 to the left, to the left, to the left. And Tavara, and you're like, to the right, no, down, no, up, no, more power to the shields kind of a thing. Uh, what we see, the exterior view is... As the Bestet is still doing that spiraling motion as it flies forward through space, the deflector uh, opens up uh, and, well, not like physically opens up, but basically a beam begins to emanate from the deflector and almost like a sonar pulse, uh, a ring flies out from the deflector, a golden ring flies out and impacts, quote unquote, a spot in space in the Bastet's flight path. And when it stops, the ring begins to spark and it shoots from one side of the circle to another. And it goes, doosh, 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 doosh. and as it reaches a crescendo, a golden portal opens up, uh, sort of like you would see almost in, I don't know if people have watched The Expanse, but there's a portal there where it's just kind of a constant sort of shimmering field. That's what's in the center of this ring. And as the Bastet flies through it, I need one person, whoever feels the luckiest, to roll me a 1d100. I'll do it. All right. Seems appropriate. And you want to see low on this. All right, a 62. So a 62 means that as you make contact with the portal, uh, the inertial dampeners immediately fail, which means all of you are lurched forward and backwards and side to side as the ship rocks about violently and as uh varissa kind of calls and says i'm rerouting power now hold on everyone and uh you know the the bridge continues to buckle the ship begins to lurch this way and that eventually everything stops and you come to a stop and outside you see something new you see a planet Except it's not your average planet that you're looking at here. This is a planet that is easily recognizable by the ship's sensors. And almost as if to drive the point home, Barissa says, Um, sir, you're not going to like where we are. Is that Narendra 3? That would be Narendra 3, yes. And um, you see those ships there. Oh, no. Yes. Well, I always wanted to see how the Battle of Narendra 3 played out. And just so that you guys have a visual reference, here's kind of the situation. So the Bastet is off there, uh, upper left. You guys are currently not really engaged in anything, and nobody's really noticed you. Uh, but what you see are five Romulan warbirds uh, taking turns bombarding both the Narendra 3 outpost and the Enterprise C, the Ambassador class. Orders, Captain? Are our... Did we take any damage to our sensors? Something doesn't look right about this. Uh, I'm not seeing any evidence of damage or mis misrepresented sensors, Captain? I can confirm that, Captain. The sensors are working normally. I thought history recorded that there were only four warbirds at Narendra 3 when the Enterprise-C was lost. That is... That's what I know to be history. And then Relore, really? in her most annoyed voice, says, Oh boy, who saw this coming? Oh wait. Should, should, we, should we engage one of them so that it's, it'll only be a four to one on the Enterprise C? Well, four or five. Is, is this really going to, to, to change history here? This is when Does we lost the Federation's flagship. But also when we gained the uh, good good will of the Klingon Empire. Have any of the warbirds noticed us yet? 
It doesn't appear that way, sir, says uh, Varissa. But um, should we cloak or get out of here? Bring us under cloak. All right. So uh, this is going to be an actual roll because you are in pseudo combat situation. And what that's going to involve is that's going to involve a control and an engineering. The ship will assist you with a structure engineering, if I remember my uh, cloaking rules appropriately. Uh, the difficulty on this is a three. So I think, Tavarin, I think you're the one that's got to do this one. Since you're I got the ship. Uh, I think the captain is just as well equipped if you want to take this one. Also true. The captain could take command if he so wished. Yes. I'll let you go ahead and handle this one. So it was control and engineering? You got it. All right. Uh, augmented ability control and mm -hmm. shipboard tactical systems. And cloak is a tactical system, so yes. And I'll spend one momentum on the hopes of getting uh, two successes there. All right. Well, it's a good thing you did because uh, you basically squeaked by. So the Bastet, uh, using its antiquated cloaking system that you stole from a certain war, or not warbird, but... Uh, uh, Kavort class. I think it was a Kavort class. Maybe it was a D7. Either way, your stolen Klingon cloaking device works like a charm, and the Bastet fee fades visually from view. So you I, guys I will say, are however, currently cloaked. That we do have a complication on the field because of my augmented ability control. We got one extra success for one momentum, and that 19 would then be a complication. Ooh, okay. So I think what the complication is going to be is that as you cloak... Um, you hear a chime from Varissa's station, and she sort of says, um, So, we're being hailed by the Enterprise C. Also, don't forget to roll your, uh, your untapped potential. Yeah, I have to give the GM more threat. No, you actually no. get momentum. So, we have two momentum then. Mm -hmm. uh, Bossy stares at the view screen. Audio only. All right. So, uh, of course, you only hear uh, what's going on here. But what you hear is the sound of uh, sparking consoles, the sound of people shouting orders, and a female voice um, comes over the view call. I'm just trying to remember what her name is because apparently I didn't put it in my notes. Rachel what? Garrett. That's Captain her name. Garrett. Thank you. Um, Rachel Garrett, a uh, very stern, if not understanding woman, comes over the comm and says, uh, Hello, hello, we detected a, a Federation signal from this section of space just a few moments ago. Is there is there anyone out there? Hello, hello, is anyone there? Uh, well, he's trying really hard because he knows what the outcome of this battle is supposed to be. He knows how important it is. Captain, if I may. Go ahead. We've we've already established that we're not going to be able to reestablish the timeline we're familiar with without heading back to the uh, initial, countering the effects of the initial incursion from us. So to a certain extent, what we do here doesn't matter. So I say you're probably relieved of the burden of worrying about the timeline and just worry about following your own moral compass. Strange as it may be, sir, I agree. The Temporal Prime Directive may not apply in this situation, and we can't leave them to die. I just want to point out that a while back I said we should do whatever we want, and everyone just jumped on my back, so... Um, just wanted to know that. So, some of us just don't come to the appropriate conclusions as quickly, Alexio. <laughs> and this is not Thank doing you. whatever we want, Alexio. This is saving the lives of Starfleet officers. Yes, yes, yes. Captain, orders? We're going to help the Enterprise. Yes! <laughs> All right. And with that, I get to turn on the combat music. I get to... Uh put dots on the board and et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully you guys know where the combat handouts are. Cause that's what we're about to do. All right. So let's get everybody in a turn order here. 
And I actually am going to include both the Enterprise C as well as the Outpost. Now, a few words of wisdom here. Um, well, first, actually, before I get into that, let me actually turn on the music and you guys can tell me if it's too loud. All right, is that too loud? Is it just right? Do I need to turn it up? I think it needs to turn down a little bit. Still. Down a little bit? Okay, because if it's on your end, you can just with the master volume level on the gear tab. Because um, I quite as... Okay, so it's quite on stream, but too loud for the players. All right, let me see if I can adjust that. Oh, so yeah. players, you're probably going to want to turn your uh, volume down for this as I pitch it up mm -hmm. just a little bit. Yeah. All right, how's that stream? Is that uh, is that any better? It's a little bit louder, but uh, hopefully it's not too loud because I, I do want it to be just sort of ambience. Perfect. Excellent. All right. So the way this is going to work is uh, obviously the Bastet has a turn. The Enterprise C has a turn. The Outpost has a turn. Then all the Warbirds have a turn. What I'm going to say here is that the Enterprise C actually has a macro already ready to go for whatever roles you need it to make. So whenever you want the Enterprise C to go, I'm going to let one of you tell me what you want the Enterprise C to do, and then we'll roll appropriately based on that macro. Um, the other thing I would say is that you are outnumbered here, which means that the Romulans are going to get more turns than you do. But the benefit to that is that you will always go first at the top of every round. Question. Um, yes. On that note, would we be less outnumbered if we turned into three ships? Um, it would be one of those situations where going into multi-vector would apply the benefits of the talent, but it wouldn't give you multiple turns. That's the okay. only difference. Well, then I don't suggest we do it. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I know. Go I, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Finish your thought. Well, all I was going to say is I know in previous games with Prometheus classes that I did let each, you know, section of the ship have its own turn order, but... For a skeleton crew, eh, you guys are one ship. Like, if you had a full crew, I'd say, yeah, you you have separate turn orders. But, yeah, skeleton crew, that's nah, just one ship, unfortunately. And just a question about the disposition of the forces that are arrayed against us. Mm -hmm. um, based on their visual profile and what we know of Romulan technology, do we have a tactical advantage, or are these, like, scale six Romulan warbirds from our own period? I was waiting to see if somebody would ask. So, Tavarin, I need you to make me a reason and a security difficulty of two. And I'll tell you what, the ship will actually assist you with a sensor security on this one. Nice. I'll you. buy one extra die and uh, shipboard tactical systems. Mm, yeah, that would apply. Ooh. All right, so I'm going to give you a choice, Tavarin. Um, you can either let this succeed at cost, and basically all I'm going to do is I'm not going to give you a complication, but I would take four threat. Or you can just simply fail at this task. It's up to you which you would prefer. I think that I'm going to take the failure. And I would then, as I'm working at the, the sensor console and trying to liaise with tactical, I turn to the captain and say, Sir, I'm afraid that interference from the cloaking device is limiting our sensor's uh, resolution. I can't get a, an accurate scan of those warbirds. We'll make do with what we can. When we, en when we engage them, we're going to be dropping cloak anyways. You can attempt it again. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, before we actually go into combat, I do actually want to respond to Captain Garrett. Go for it. Captain Garrett, this is Captain Abbasi of the Bastet. We are en route. We will be there to assist you shortly. And Garrett comes back and says, Oh, thank heavens. Uh, I honestly didn't know what the hell happened. Uh, we went into a temporal vortex for a moment. We, we saw the future Enterprise D. And then we came back. And then all of a sudden, the Warbirds were more advanced. Uh, there's five of them now. Uh, I'm not, look, I, I don't care if you're some temporal anomaly yourself, but we'll take all the help we can get at this point. Is We're anyone, on our way. Does anyone remember the Enterprise C meeting the Enterprise D? Great. <clears throat> all right, well... It is at this point that the ally turn can go first. So this can either be the outpost, the Enterprise C, or the Bastet. Uh, what I would say in terms of cloaking 
it just takes a miner to drop out a cloak. And anybody can do that miner. I would say that the Enterprise C is probably going to get pounded in a few seconds, so we might want to take evasive action with them as their action. Okay. Uh, I have a talent switched. where if I succeed in a evasive action, we could uh, spend two momentum and then it won't increase the difficulty for attacks that would normally come, be caused by evasive action. Right, but that would be for the best stat. That wouldn't be for the Enterprise C. Fair. I do agree with Devar and have them do an evasive action. Okay. So the way this is going to work, you guys giving commands to the Enterprise C, um, is basically the Bastet has a command score. I believe the Bastet actually has a one in command. So what you get to do, and I probably should have said this to start, is you get to issue once per round, because you have a one in command, you can issue a command to the Enterprise C. Sort of like direct. Um, mm -hmm. The difference is, is that you only get to do this once per round. After that, the Enterprise C is going to act on its own. So just be extra sure that that is the order you want to give before we start rolling dice. So does everyone else agree with it? Yeah, it sounds right to me. I mean, you're the captain. <laughs> captain Garrett, initiate evasive actions. We're going to come in and draw some fire. All right. So in that instance, I need whoever feels lucky. There should be a new macro entitled NC Rolls. Uh, I would say you can spend momentum on them as well. Uh, if you are so inclined, you just have to declare it before the roll is made. Don't forget to roll for untapped potential there. Oh yeah, for uh, Tavarin. Good call. Hey, you get a momentum. Very nice. And question about the Enterprise C, what would it be rolling, and what would be the difficulty? Uh, the difficulty on this is going to be a 2, and they are rolling uh, what is essentially going to be a Control and Helm, if I remember correctly. Let me just double check, because they did change a few things. Oh, it's actually Daring and Con, uh, assisted by the ship Structure Con, and it's actually only a difficulty of 1. It just costs a power. That's what they changed it to. Okay. Hmm. I mean, I'll roll for the ship. I'd buy one extra die, maybe. All right. All right, well, uh, with that, that's three successes. So, actually, hold on. That is two successes from the crew, one success for momentum, and then one success for the helm action. So that's a total of four successes, so you actually get three momentum back for your troubles. And uh, Garrett immediately takes uh, the order to heart and starts shouting for evasive pattern Delta. And what we see is that the Enterprise C begins to almost uh, rotate on its axis, or axis um, in such a way that as it spins and dips and dives and ducks, uh, it basically avoids the incoming fire of the warbirds in a little bit more of a graceful fashion. Captain, I, I don't want to talk out of turn, but I know more about uh, helmsmen and... Uh, evasive maneuvers on Enterprise ships than probably anybody in Starfleet right now. And that is not an Enterprise C crewman's flying or evasive pattern. The tactical officer on this ship shouldn't know that pattern. Uh, it's, I mean, it, it's, I mean, it looks like Tasha Yars from the D, but that doesn't make any sense. Let's focus on one thing at a time. We can, we'll figure this one out later. All right. So before the Romulans go, do you guys want to spend two momentum to retain the initiative? Or if somebody has quick to action, you would get to do it for free. All right. Sounds like a no. That's yeah. I was going to say that sounds like a no. So I think up next is going to be Romulan Warbird Alpha. Uh, Romulan Warbird Alpha is just going to take a pot shot at the Enterprise C. It is at a difficulty of three, and it actually passes. So the Enterprise C is going to take eight damage, so it's a scale five vessel. So the shields of the Enterprise are going to go down by three, but uh, all things considered, they're still above half shields. So good job there. And then I'm going to spend two threat to retain the initiative that Romulan Warbird Epsilon is going to attack the outpost. Now, the way the attacking the outpost is going to work is 
as long as I pass uh, at least one success, that they're going to do damage to the outpost. Because, you know, it's a planet. It's a very easy target to shoot. Um, and yeah, they are able to hit it. And they are going to do a grand total of, looks like, nine damage to the outpost. Uh, but the outpost has an innate three resistance, so they only take six damage. And hopefully you guys can see the bars above uh, Narendra and Enterprise C. And if you can't, let me know now. Captain, the Enterprise C's uh, shields are down to 55%. Noted. Ish. Right. And that would be our turn now, then? It is your turn, yes. Right, I'm going to use a direct task. Lieutenant Tavarin, I want you to lock on to the closest warbird and open fire with phasers. Is that at medium range, or is it at Yeah, that's range? what I'm checking. Apparently, I forgot to uh, change it over. Let me just quick that quickly change that. Uh, looks like you're at eight right now, and the, I mean, you could, you are at optimal range for torpedoes, um, but you need to be six or lower in order to use phasers optimally. Okay. Uh, Captain, these Romulan warbirds, from what Captain Garrett has said, may be more advanced than we would expect. And given our range, perhaps we should scan them for any weak points, learn more about them, and then fire a salvo of torpedoes at this range. reasonable go ahead make a scan all right so tavarin since you're the one who's doing this i need you to roll me a control and a science the bastet will assist you with a sensor security and the overall difficulty on this based on the range uh it is going to be a difficulty of four i believe because it's close medium yeah difficulty of four Actually, well, hold on. It goes close, medium, long, and you're at long, so I guess it's only difficulty three. Okay. Um, would anyone mind to spend two momentum? Uh, actually, three momentum to buy two extra dice, and I'll use augmented ability control. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the best that gives you one success. She's helping. Hey, that's a total of, uh, what is that, uh, five successes. So you actually get uh, two points of momentum back. And uh, Oops. just to be clear, you were doing this to Romulan Warbird Beta? Uh, yes. Okay. So as you scan the Romulan Warbird, uh, what you find out, Tavarn, is something extremely important. This isn't a 2344 Warbird. This is a contemporary, well, pseudo-contemporary, 2378 Warbird. So actually a little bit ahead of where you guys are in the time zone. Captain, I don't understand how this is possible, but these Warbirds are actually from our future. What? <laughs> That doesn't change anything right now. We need to deal with them. Uh, yes, sir. And I'd like to spend the one momentum I got for a success with the bridge console and one of the momentum that we have there mm -hmm. uh, to create the advantage that my scan for weakness has also identified the uh, the flight path of this Romulan Warbird. And because it hasn't detected us, it can't really evade us. So the advantage is going to lower the difficulty on our torpedo attack. I think that's entirely valid. I love it. Okay. Uh, and then would you like to spend two momentum uh, with the direct task that you're going to give me and have us go again to fire? Yes, I would. All right. So, uh, Alexio, I think this is your time to shine. <laughs> so, Alexio, uh, this is going to be a uh, control security difficulty of two. And what I would say is that uh, because you scanned for weakness... Uh, you can basically buy every D20 you buy as part of the roll, you do one more challenge die in your pool. So, for example, mm. if you roll three dice, you get one extra challenge dice. If you buy two extra D20s, you get two challenge dice, etc., etc. I am. Oh, um. I'm tempted to, to buy not only the one with that one momentum, but buy another one by giving him two threats, just so that we get the... No. Do it up. 
Oh yeah, and I think we have two momentum because I had one floating momentum from oh. my use of a bridge console. Okay, mm -hmm. so we'd only be giving him one threat then. Mm -hmm. And I would also recommend the salvo. So, mm -hmm. if that was what, uh, what you were going to do. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. So, what is the... It's a control security, right? Control security, and the ship will assist you with weapon security. And since this is what my direct task was initially, what am I rolling? You're rolling a presence and command for your part. And the good news is because you have advisor, at least I think you do. I do. Uh, that means, Alexio, if you roll a complication or something you don't like, you can re-roll at least one die. Nice. Is the best at assisting? Uh, yeah, weapon security from the best at. Thank you. So, would I have a focus on this one? If you have team dynamics, uh, leadership, anything of that nature. I don't think so. All right, well, we're already All at right. four successes on the board. Five successes. Do you want to re-roll that zero? No, actually, because I think it would just be pushing it. So I, <laughs> I don't want to roll a complication. So I'm, I'm, I think, I think I'm good with the five. What do you think? All right. Yeah. So that is a total of five successes. Then getting you three momentum back, and uh, as the best at uh, decloaks, because you have to decloak to fire, uh, we see it sort of soar in, not on the map, but visually, like in <laughs> thought space. We see it sort of fly in and unleash a salvo of four or five photon torpedoes screening through space at the Romulan Warbird. So, uh, let me just double check. We don't have quantums? Uh, I tell you what, if you give me one momentum to do an additional minor, you can use quantums because technically quantums you have to calibrate, which is a minor action. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be more than worthwhile considering the superiority of quantum Yeah, computers. more than worth mm -hmm. it. All right, so forget the photons. We see uh, shining streaks of blue prisms flying at the uh, the Romulans. Uh, so because you bought two dice, uh, you actually get to roll 10 challenge dice on this one. <laughs> All right. Wow. Wow. Oh, yes. Uh, so that is a grand total of 13 damage uh, before accounting for resistance. Uh, would you like to spend any momentum to overcome resistance? Does it not ha lose all of its six resistance because we scan for weaknesses? <gasps> That's right. You scan for weakness. You are completely right. Yep. And do we want to reroll those zeros as well? Let's let's go it. Yeah. All right. So that's three zeros. That we got here. Yep, All right, that's that's, 11. 11, that's a total of fourteen. Which, to be honest, let's let's add up the breaches here. You did more than five. That's one. You took out its shields. That's two. You have high yield. That's three and four. The spread effect from the salvo is another two hit. No, another three hits. So you just wombo comboed a warbird. How would you like to describe this thing exploding? I mean, I think we do like a very cool, like strafing run, like coming out of cloak, flying over, blasting it, just full of full of torpedoes, and and it and it goes. Gotcha. So as you swoop in, uh, you almost like a um, like a depth charge. You sort of fire at close range, like again, visually. Yeah. Um, you fire the torpedoes, just dumping into the the dorsal section of the Romulan warbird, and the resulting explosions cascade across the multiple hulls of the warbird until it literally detonates in a fiery explosion. Very nice. So that is going to be the Bastet's turn, which means it is now going to be the Romulan's turn. So Warbird Delta is going to try and wail on the Enterprise C. And it fails spectacularly. Good job, you. <laughs> And then uh, Gamma is going to attempt to attack the outpost. Are they maintaining one? Are you spending threat for them to maintain the turn? Uh, yeah, I am. I'm spending two threat. Okay. Um, actually, no, wait. I can't because I've already done it this turn. You can only do it once per round. So actually, yeah, uh, ignore that roll. Uh, it would go back to either the Bastet, the outpost, or Enterprise C at this point. And I also should have uh, rolled untapped potential, actually. Hey, Which... more threat. 
does give you a threat. All right, well, uh, what would you like the Outpost Enterprise C or the Bastet to do next? Captain, orders? Should we put the ship between some of those warbirds and the, the Outpost? Bring us in closer to the Enterprise C. Let's try and put ourselves between it and one of the warbirds. Just one, or do you want me to block off two? If you can do two, do two. So maybe about there? Well, I was thinking... Oops, no, don't pick it up. Here. Oh, so I see you'd be going down this way. Okay, yeah, yeah. you could do that. Uh, so that's going to be a fairly simple helm task. Uh, this will count as you doing a micro warp jump. And what that's going to mean is a control con on your part. The ship will assist you with an engines con. The difficulty is zero, but your power cost will be four, just so you know. All right. Well, I'm going to spend that momentum just so that I can roll on tap potential. Okay. Uh, helm operations is the focus. Mm-hmm. All right, that is three successes. Does the uh, Bastet get you any more? <laughs> oh, you already get two from untapped potential. That's very nice. Does someone have the ship? Uh, what was the ship rolling again? Engines con. Okay. All right, yeah, it is a uh, grand total of four successes, so you're capped on momentum easy. And yeah, uh... Uh, tell me which hex specifically you want to go to. There should be little labels on each of them. Yeah, I was thinking I was thinking P16, which would put us almost back to back so, uh, with the Enterprise. Literally almost right on top of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, there's almost a, a flash of light as the nacelles discharge and rocket the Bastet forward in a micro warp jump. And you come out right next to the Enterprise C uh, right in time to uh, see something very interesting. So on the Romulan's turn, the Gamma Bird was originally going to attack the outpost, but now they're going to see you two sort of grouped up. And I think that what they're going to do is they're going to see the Bastet as the bigger threat, and they're actually going to try and torpedo you. So I do have to spend some threat uh, to in order to torpedo you, but... Uh, how much threat do I want to give them? I'll spend three additional threats, so a total of five threats spend here um, in order for me to do this. Uh, they are going to have two additional dice here, so let's see what happens. Uh, that is three, four... Yeah, they hit you for six. Uh, so the good news is, is as the plasma torpedo fires out and strikes the Bastet... Um, the Bastet doesn't actually suffer any immediate damage. Uh, however, uh, Mir, Lieutenant Mir, uh, calls out, Sir, we, we've got a persistent energy field that's enveloping the ship. Uh, it's going to last for a little bit. Uh, I, I don't think we're going to be able to shake it off, just so that you know. I will deal with any damage when we're able to. All right, and just so you guys know, uh, what this means is you rolled the enemy rolled three effects. So for three turns, at the start of every round, you're going to take eight damage because that is the persistent <clears throat> damage. And that is reduced by resistance, but you are going to still take eight damage for three rounds. Oof. All right, well, uh, at this point, uh, it returns to the players. What would you guys like to do next? Perhaps have the Enterprise open fire. Mm -hmm. Let them have a turn, yeah. And what I would say is that uh, you can hit every Warbird except big old Gamma over there. All right, so you want to strike Epsilon. Got it. Uh, you giving the Enterprise C any momentum? Might as well, I think. Three, I think, yeah. Okay. 
then yeah, whoever feels lucky, go ahead and hit that macro. Let's see what happens. No one feels lucky. Yeah. He used up all <laughs> earlier on. Yeah, uh, I think I on. used up all my luck, too. All right, so unfortunately, uh, the momentum doesn't get you anything, but uh, with three successes on the board, that is one momentum back. And yeah, uh, they're going to fire out for, it looks like, eight damage to the Warbird. And something very interesting is going to happen. The Warbird is going to take the damage to its shields. However, what you see on the view screen is that the visual image of the Warbird begins to flicker and dim. And appearing in its place is a different kind of Warbird. Uh, it looks to be more sleek, a little bit more advanced. Uh, definitely not from this time period. This is this is a ship at a time. Um, but the major difference here is that when you, you know, passively try to date the craft, you're looking at 29th century tech easy. Whoa. Oh, I don't like that. Well, you're going to hate me because this is where we're going to go to break. So we're going to be back oh, in about five to ten minutes, everybody. <laughs> Stick around.
Welcome back, everybody. And uh, if you're just tuning in, the Bastet has found itself in the middle of the Battle of Narindra 3. Only things aren't shaping out as they're supposed to in history. Apparently, Tashiar is on the Enterprise C. There's a Romulan temporal warbird on the field. Uh, the warbirds that are trying to blow up the Enterprise C in the outpost are not from this time period. It's not really good. There's a lot of questions and not a whole lot of answers. But, as I actually remember to hit red alert this time, uh, it is going to be the temporal warbird's turn. And the warbird is going to attempt to do something with its deflector. And as it does, uh, Ensign V is going to shout, Um... Yeah, uh, you know that thing we just did with our deflector? They're trying to do the same thing. I, I thought we only had one shot at it. Well, apparently they did better than us. What do you want from me? Nothing. You're you're great. You're 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 beautiful. You're doing a great job. So with that success, uh, what's going to happen is a very small singularity is going to open up nearby the Temporal Warbird. Now, it's not super big yet, like not big enough to uh, get a ship through, but there is a, uh anomaly on the field, just so you know. And with that, uh, I believe we either go back to the Bastet or the Enterprise uh, C or Narendra Outpost. Take cater to the captain. I, 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 I just knocked my head inside the holodeck. What the hell's going on up there? Oh, uh, we're in the middle of a firefight with several Romulan warbirds. Why did no one tell me? And then you just hear Cater like huffing down the hallway towards the turbo lift. Question, uh, GM. Mm -hmm. Does the temporal Romulan warbird look like it's heading towards the portal? Uh, have they made any moves to move towards it? Or are they potentially waiting for somebody to come out. Can we determine that? What I would say is it's almost like the ship is staying in one place as it continues to pulse its deflector. So it's trying to grow the anomaly from where it is currently. Now, whether or not it's trying to go in or get something out, there's just not enough data yet to make a conclusion one way or the other. All right, I have to turn back on the music. I knew I was forgetting something. Yeah, I guess in the absence of uh, any takers, I think what's going to happen is Narendra Outpost is going to go. And what you're going to see is this tiny little, like, red-colored phaser fire up from the surface. And it's going to strike the Romulan Warbird Gamma. And it's going to do one point of shield damage. Just just one little point. And uh, it's, it's pathetic, but you can tell that the Klingons have some honor and they're going to fight best they can. But yeah, uh, let's see. Which Warbird hasn't acted twice yet? Let me look. Uh, looks like Romulan Warbird uh, Delta down there. Uh, looks like they're going to get a shot off. So let me check ranges. Uh, they're going to go for Enterprise C on this one. All right. Uh, I only have two threat and I want to save it. So this is just going to be a flat roll. Good thing I Ooh. saved it. So another torpedo, another plasma torpedo comes flying at you. But at the last second before it hits you, it swerves out of the way and slams into the Enterprise C. And much like your uh, dot, as it were, they now have a dot as well. Uh, theirs only last two rounds, though. Let me just actually do that. And then that so we remember and then yeah uh i think the only action you have left on the bastet is internal systems so if you wanted power uh if you wanted i think actually that 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 pretty much is it is is power oh no it's power shields or damage control but you're not breached so it's shields or power really could i make a suggestion yeah um we know from i guess what I had said earlier on, that there's this problem with chronometric interference. 
-hmm. and that there's this issue that could arise with the use of this technology. Is there something that we could do to create some kind of feedback, like a task that our, an engineer could use our deflector to create some kind of feedback loop in the beam that they're sending out that would, I don't know, drain power from the ship, uh, cause some kind of feedback damage to its deflector arrays or its shields? Mm -hmm. Is there some kind of task that we could undertake to do that? It's an interesting question. Uh, what I would say is you would be at an increased difficulty because you've already done a tactical action on this round. But it is possible. Uh, what I would say is that this would be a daring in engineering. The ship would assist you with a structure engineering. The difficulty on this would be a five. Uh, and it would have to be the good doctor making this role because if it's not the good doctor making this role, by my count, everyone on the bridge has acted already. So if anybody else on the bridge attempts it, you're at a difficulty six. Okay. Well, it was an idea. Mm -hmm. What know. do I need to roll to do it? You need a uh, you need a daring engineering, and you need five successes. Not happening. The doctor will look at the data <laughs> that you send. Like I can't do that. Nice. All right. Well, at well, least you know your limitations, Doctor. Sure. Uh, in which case, uh, can can you restore some power to the shields? Maybe. I mean, you might as well use that action. What do I need to do to restore power to the shields? Oh, what I would say is that your shields are actually at full right now, besides the persistent effect. So How do you we could, get rid of the persistent effect? We were going to spend two momentum to do that. Were right, we you were going to do a shield modulation, but I looked it up. Shield modulation is also a tactical action. So... Oof. Oof. But, uh, hey, you could do power management to maybe get power back. There is that. Sure. How do I do that? You do either a daring or a control at difficulty of two. Uh, with what? Control what? Uh, control and engineering. All right, let's do it. And yeah, uh, before you do that, out of character question for you, Cater. Yeah. In character, would he know what to do to reroute power? Um. Well, apparently not. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think saying, what happens is you. Because I was going to ask if I could assist him and actually show him this is probably the easiest and best way to attempt to draw more power. You know what? Yeah, I'll allow it. Why don't you do a presence engineering on your part, Abasi? Let's go. And if you get one, uh, if you get a success, you get a point of power back. And would my warp field dynamics count as a focus? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Okay. So I think even with your assistance, uh, Abbasi, you guys kind of be like, yeah, we, we can't pull power from anything right now. Oh, well. All right. So it is at this point that all the Romulan warbirds have acted, uh, they, or at least they fired. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll three times for scan for weakness. Uh, oh, the boy. first scan for weakness on the Enterprise C uh actually passes so the enterprise c gets one lock on from alpha and then let's see enterprise or romulan warbird gamma let's do you next uh fails that one miserably delta's gonna scan for weakness the bastet uh actually passes so you guys have been scanned for weakness as well and then I think the only thing left is whether or not you want the Enterprise C to regenerate shields or power. Uh, shields. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, go ahead and roll the Enterprise C. Uh, they are trying to get uh, difficulty of one here. Right. Having made that decision, I'll, I'll roll the dice. Cause... <laughs> oh, all right. There you and go. with one success, that's all you need. But that is a complication. Um, so I think what happens is the Enterprise C restores two of its shields. A 16 is a complication? Uh, no, the 20. The non-command tasks? Ah, ah. Yeah, the non-command task is the ship assisting. That's what that is. So I think what happens is the shields of the Enterprise C go back up, at least partially. 
but they also suffer uh, a point of power loss for their troubles. And yeah, with that, we finally go to the top of the initiative order as a new round. And with that, I need the Bastet to suffer 8 uh, damage. Of course, account for resistance. The Enterprise C will suffer 8 damage, accounting for its resistance. And then yeah, fresh round. So all of your, ta all your actions, your rolls, all of them have been refreshed at this point. Uh, sorry, we didn't take 8 points of damage though. We took, what, 4? Because we're skill 4? Uh, yeah, I think you actually have a Blade of Armor, so you only take 2. Yeah, okay. So I saw us drop down to 12 shields, and that was a bit concerning. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, uh, what's the play here, guys? What are you going to do? I think the uh, <clears throat> idea that the Varn had of remodulating shields would probably be a good thing to get that energy field situated. Okay. And as you like me, I'm pretty good at evasive action here, guys. If we want also, to be harder to hit while that happens. Just as a reminder, though, uh, if you want to do something to mess with the Temporal Warbird, that's also a tactical action. So, just so you know. What was I, that? I almost wonder if we're modulating shield, I almost wonder if I should go ahead and do that one to leave the Varen open the fire on the warper to or or do something just just an idea because i think that uh it depends on what we really really want to succeed more because i think uh i think the varin has some useful talents to, to, to help get over the edge of its close in character he is thrilled that you have finally admitted his uh, obvious <laughs> superiority uh <laughs> but yes no you guys tell me what do you want to do if uh, he remodulated shields and then Thavarin took a tactical action later on in the turn to um, to affect that plan, would that still be difficulty four or five? Uh, I believe it would only be a difficulty of four. Let me just double check. Uh, no, actually, the Bastet has two tactical stations because you have a security of four. Um, so... Actually, it would be only a difficulty of three because you're at the second tactical station. You haven't acted this turn. Yeah, you you would do it a difficulty of three. Okay. I say if that's the case, it's worth it. Let's remodulate shields. All right. So I'll do I mean, the. the sh but we should do the remodulating shields as like the last thing because it's not going to affect us until our next turn, right? No, it uh, it happens immediately. N no, but what I mean is like we're not going to take damage again until the top of next round, right? This or is, is it happening the top of every the next time. Round. Yep. No, we've already but taken we just the two took that of damage. damage though. Right, but you're forgetting the fact that the warbirds can fire now, and modulating shields applies to all incoming damage. Ah. All right. So we won't be able to take any more dots, is what you're saying. If we remodulate the shields. Okay. But, well, then that is... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a little confusing, but again, Starship Combat is one of the most uh, expansive and extensive parts of the rules. Yeah, I was just thinking getting rid of our persistent damage should be theoretically the last thing we do in this round, But if because it's not going to happen until next round, but if it's going to provide protection against all of the other damage we might take. Yeah, mm -hmm. basically, it's a difficulty yeah. to task, and if you succeed, uh, you get one resistance automatically, plus an additional one resistance per momentum you spend. And that lasts until you take damage, meaning that if you get up to, like, resistance 10, you have to do resistance, or you have to do 11 <laughs> damage just to get rid of that modulation. Seems worth it for sure. All right, so I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and do the shield modulation, okay. admitting the superiority of the Varen at shooting things. Definitely. Um, so that that is a control security, right? It is indeed, and the Bastet will assist you with a structure engineering. The difficulty on this is a two. Structure engineering check. I've already I'm also actually... set up the power. Oh, you already have. Sorry. 
I'm gonna go ahead and tap my determination here, just okay. in just in case. Uh, off of the value, whatever you need to do to survive, because mm -hmm. I'm trying to keep us alive. Um, yeah. So I will, I'll throw that in for two free successes as well. All right. Well, uh, that is a grand total of four successes, so you're capped on momentum. However, there is a complication. I'm actually going to take threat instead of the complication, because Lord Fine. knows I need it. And we'll spend those two momentum immediately to remove the persistent effect. Is that what we decided? Yeah. Okay. It is uh, only two the, points of damage, though. Plus the other four momentum to give us an additional four resistance. I think it's worth it. I might suggest, hear me out, to just spend all the momentum on resistance, because then that persistent effect won't damage us anymore, and we'll also have like resistance 12 or something crazy, mm -hmm. if I'm doing my math right. Uh, mm -hmm. 10, I think, if it's... Well, we have a base of 4, we have a blade of armor, which gives us, I believe, 5. 6. We modulated the shield oh, yeah. 6, and then oh, we 12. just got one from... Does modulating give us 15. 1? 1 to succeed, one? yep. So, that's so you're seven. already at 7. So we would be at... 13. 13. So yeah. I think that's worth it. Just yeah. call me crazy. Yeah. Okay, crazy. All right. So, uh, yeah, I think what happens is, Alexio, you enter in a modulation pattern on the shields, and I think you actually get like a calm from the Enterprise C's uh, security officer to be like, whatever the hell you just did, I want you to teach me how you did it. Everyone. Really praises me for my shield modulation. I'm realizing. <laughs> I, I, is that a job? Is that? Is, could I just do that? <laughs> I think we'll leave that to you from now on. I mean, it's <laughs> half a job. Oh lord! All right. Uh, do you want to? Sp well, I guess you spent all your momentum. Uh, so I think that's going to mean it's the Romulan's turn. Uh, untapped potential. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, he didn't right. roll. Uh, he didn't roll. Oh, no, that's right. didn't, no, I didn't. Down. We spend yeah. the momentum on other things. <laughs> All right. Well, I think what's going to happen then is Romulan Warbird Alpha is going to open fire on the Enterprise C. It has the benefit of scan for weakness. And luckily for the Enterprise C, it not only fails, but it rolls a complication in the process. So the Romulan Warbird Alpha, uh, the disruptor banks charge up and they discharge but it's just a light show. Like, it doesn't actually fire a beam of green light at the Enterprise C. So, you know, you, you have to know that that help that tactical officer is getting yelled at, kind of a thing. And then, yeah, I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to have. I'm going to spend two threat to have the Romulan, the Temporal Warbird. Uh, they're going to attempt to enlarge in, because that's a word. Uh, they're going to try to grow the anomaly. <laughs> And actually, they fail. Uh, so they the anomaly stays the same size on its turn. But yeah, back to you guys. What would you like to do? I would like to go ahead and use a rally task to get us some momentum. Okay. I believe that is just a presence command difficulty of zero, if I remember correctly. It is. Do you want to give him a threat so you can roll on tap potential or yeah let's do that it's gonna come back to bite me i'm sure but i feel it <laughs> i don't think i have a focus that would apply to this though yeah i'm not really seeing one that would Eight. hey that's three momentum though very nice and I, I'm just curious, what do you say in this situation? Because it does say you have to give a speech of some sort. To, uh, behind Lieutenant Alexio's exquisite example of shield techniques, I don't think we're going to take any damage from this. Yeah, Captain! Well stated! Let's get in there, crew! Or don't mention the flying or nothing, but whatever, it's cool. And I think Relora sort of elbows Droxine and says, hey, let him have this one. They don't get to do it often. Let him have it. And then my challenge die. 
All right, oh. so no help there. All right, which means it is now time for Romulan Warbird Delta down there. And I think the Warbird is going to open fire on the Bastet. Don't think it ever matters, because even with that enough successes, yeah, they do 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, which you have 13 resistance, which means, um, yeah, that's a whole lot of nothing. So, yeah, the Warbird fires on you, which should be a crippling blow. Does nothing. Your shields hold 100%. No problem. Uh, did we decide that we were going to have Tavarn try and uh, destabilize their wormhole, or are we shooting again? Captain, if I may, um, I've been taking scans of the temporal anomaly, and I believe if we reverse a tachyon beam at the anomaly, we could f force the other ship to destabilize its power core. It's worth an attempt. By the way, Cater just made that up on the spot. He has no idea, but he wants to help. I mean, it sounded good. That's what matters. Oh. <laughs> He's trying to impress me. Would right. that then be a tactical action, or is he going to do a si some sort of science action with that? I assist uh... with a um, with a science action. I do have spatial anomaly. Yeah, I'll give uh, it to you as a focus. Um, spatial phenomena. So I yeah. want to do if I could do like a like a insight or a reason, whatever you think, you know, I would think actually maybe a daring in a science on this one. I'm cool with that. And then I would say with a focus, because I'm I'm using the sensors to like guide his tachyon beam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. yeah. So yeah, Tavarin, if you want to roll that daring engineering as uh Tavarin or as Cater is assisting you, um we'll see what happens. Difficulty on this is only a three. Okay. Um would anyone mind if I spent all three of those momentum to roll two extra dice? I would mind if go for it. Go for it. Yeah. All right. That is a grand total of five successes, which means you get two momentum back. And what's going to happen is as you fire out another deflector pulse at the anomaly itself, uh, with Cater's uh, modifications to the pulse, what happens is, is the golden lance from your deflector hits the anomaly it shatters the anomaly like you would see a mirror or glass where it's almost like someone has taken a hammer and just driven it down with such great force on the anomaly that it again uh splits into multiple pieces and fragments as they sort of drift off into space and disappear but at the same time that golden bean lances uh in a reflective pattern back to the temporal vessel and the temporal vessel is immediately knocked to zero power. And as oh. that happens, all of the warbirds, except for the temporal one, disappear. Meaning that you guys yes, are out go. of Let's <laughs> go! What? Told you it'd work, Captain, Cater says, trying to sound confident. <laughs> totally my idea. Good work. Orders, Captain? Uh, try and see what we can get scans for of the area if there are any other vessels incoming. Because if I remember my history, there should be a Klingon fleet on its way here. And ELH, with the mm -hmm. one bonus momentum that I get from all fingers and thumbs and one of our extra momentum, I would like mm -hmm. to, I don't know, increase the difficulty of their any of their attempts to restore power to their ship or make it impossible, if that's something that anyone else would like to spend. I think that's a solid spend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that uh, the refracted energy has actually blown out their artificial quantum singularity system mm -hmm. uh, that, such that they can't restore power. Sounds good to me. Uh, Kevin suggests we secure the uh, temporal vessel before the Enterprise C gets too close. Speaking of the Enterprise C, uh, Verissa turns and says, um, Captain, we are getting a hail from Captain Garrett. Put it on screen. Appearing on screen is uh, Madam Garrett herself. 
And uh, she looks to be in a little bit high spirits, even though her bridge behind her is a mess. And she just says, I, I don't know what the hell you just did, Captain, but my congratulations. That was a masterful display of tactics. That was actually attributed to both one of my engineers and my doctor. Mm. Uh, the two of them working in conjunction were able to pull that off. Cater slides slightly into view and waves, hi, and slides out of view. And I think as you're doing that little high, uh, all of you are going to notice that as uh, Droxine said, yeah, Tasha Yar, totally on the, the helm station of the Enterprise-C, does not belong there. I mean, her uniform's all wrong. Yeah, her uniform is the it's almost the same one, you like the uniform before the one you guys are wearing, so the TNG era uniform. Whereas uh, Garrett is in the uh, almost the Excelsior like red jacket uniform. This is not even going to make a comment about it with as much time travel as we've already been doing. Uh, I must just going to think for a minute. Oh. See. If you want to return to assisting the outpost, we will take care of this remaining vessel. You got it. We can do that. And um, hey, I, I don't know if the Enterprise D is still around in your time, but if you ever see Jean-Luc, uh, tell him I said hi. If we ever come across him. And then Garrett sort of smiles and then cuts the comms. That was so cool. We got to talk to the Enterprise C, you guys. Oh my god, I can't even. You slid in the frame. I, I don't even know. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. Do you, think they would, do you think they would like beam over some signatures or something? Like, oh, oh, oh. Why are we so Lord, excited? Relore just sort of looks at you in a slow swivel chair of her chair and goes, "You know, I'm a full telepath and beta and an empath. You, you, you know that I've had to suffer through that for." Almost 20 minutes, and then you just blow out my ears. Do, do you hate me, Droxine? I mean, let's just be clear. No, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, yeah, I'm, I'm just giving I'm you sorry. sit, Droxine. I'm glad you're excited. Oh, oh, good. I mean, that was the Rachel Garrett and Tashi Yard. Like, she died to a spline monster. So, and, and, like, none of this makes any sense, but like, if you could get her signature on like a thing, yeah, well, like a fa hand phaser. Does we have a hand phaser? Can we get them to send us a hand? Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, we should, we should, but we should start fleet. <clears throat> Let's try and secure that warbird. So as you drift over to uh, say hello to the Romulan warbird, uh, Lieutenant Mir reports, "Um, sir, I'm getting a message on an omnidirectional signal. It's not being directed at us specifically." But should I play it all the same? Go ahead and play it. All right. So uh, on the view screen is basically going to appear the interior of what is almost a picturesque Romulan uh, Warbird ready room. Um, there is a big old uh, arboretum in the corner, big comfy desk, couple of couches and chairs. Looks very expansive, very... Um, not compact like a Starfleet office is, but sitting behind the chair of where a captain should be is not a Romulan. It is a smoother-skinned individual that some of you may or may not recognize, but they have a yellowish hairless skin, their features are blunt, and their eyes are a pale blue. And their face is half-obscured by shadow, and again, this isn't being directed at you, so just remember that as I say, that the individual says the following. We have found the interlopers. Our trap worked. Unfortunately, we were unable to lock the or intruders down. Recommend wiping this time and resetting. And then the message repeats. That doesn't sound good, Captain. 
No. Thoughts? Uh, I would recommend jamming their transmissions immediately, sir. Do it. All right. So it's fairly trivial for you to jam them at this range and without them having any power to overcome it. But as you do jam it, um, what you are going to notice is that the Romulan Warbird's power is beginning to spike back up as if they've either fixed their singularity or there's some form of containment breach. I'd like to make a scan to see if their warp core or singularity has been breached so that I can alert the captain that we need to get out of there. All right. Reason engineering, difficulty of one. Right. I'm using the sensor, so I assume I have a focus. Yeah, you've got one. Cool beans. All right, difficulty one. Yeah, that's a containment breach. Uh, Captain, their their singularity is breached. The, the ship's going critical. Helm, get us to a safe distance. Uh, Captain, can I make a recommendation as I type in a course? Maybe we should beam off their uh, uh, their hollow cloaking technology uh, while we're at it so that it isn't destroyed and we, maybe we can install it on the ship. Uh, moving to a safe distance. <laughs> I would actually recommend trying to beam off this commander, whoever she is. She, we need to interrogate her. Attempt it. All right, now let's be clear on this because you only have time for one attempt on one item. What are you attempting? The hollow projector or the mysterious individual? Considering the project that Abasi has been working on by himself, mm -hmm he is going to order to attempt to lock on and transport this individual directly into the brig. Okay. So whoever feels the most lucky here, cause it's not just skill, it's luck on this one. You're going to be rolling a control engineering. The ship will assist you with a sensors engineering base. Difficulty is two. The target is not on a transporter pad it goes up to three. The destination is not a transporter pad. It goes up to four. The quantum singularity is causing some difficulties in surrounding space, meaning that your difficulty here is a five. I haven't spent determination yet this uh, session, so maybe I should go for that. I say I haven't yet either. Then, Captain, be my guest. Can I assist with that, or I would say it would either be your assist or the ship's assist. Uh, you couldn't do both. I'm going to ask for Tavarin's assist on this one. All righty. So I am going to tap my determination of measure twice, cut once, mm -hmm. double checking all sensor logs, all scans, try and get as clear of a lock as I can. Okay. Fair enough. That'll give you two free successes. Then want to use the one momentum and give you one threat to roll an extra die. Okay. And would uh, computer systems be an applicable focus? Uh, I'll give it to you. Why not? So control and engineering. And roll three dice with a focus. Survey says uh, that's four successes. So I think, unfortunately, uh, unless you have a way to challenge a value here, you're not going to get the uh, mysterious individual. I don't think I have anything that could be challenged. Yeah, so I think what happens is you go to ramp up the transporter and it's very odd uh, their pattern seems to be in some form of flux, as if they're almost sort of suffering some form of rapid rapid cellular degradation. Uh, almost like they are disintegrating the longer they exist on this plane. And unfortunately, by the time you engage the transport, there's just not enough left of them to uh, establish a total pattern lock, meaning that as the Bastet flies away from the singularity or from the growing uh, singularity from the warbird, um, the warbird sort of uh, implodes on itself as the singularity rages for a moment and then also implodes upon itself, leaving not even a X-ray behind to show that there once was a ship there. Damn. 
I'm sorry, Captain. I I was so consumed by the adrenaline rush of the battle. I I, I wasn't very much help to you. You did a fine job. I couldn't get a clear enough signal. And get I us think... back under cloak. All right. So as uh, as you guys get back under cloak, uh, Mir's going to sort of turn and go. Well, um, that was exciting. Um, what should we do now, Captain? Um, obviously, we don't want to mess with the time as much as we can. Uh, let me rephrase that. What are your orders, sir? Let's head back towards Federation space. I want... Wherever this vessel came from, I want to see if we can locate any other temporal anomalies. Sounds good, sir. And then, because I think it's a good segue, uh, Matt and Alex, if you guys want to have that ready room scene, I think this is the perfect sort of lead into it, if you want. Right. I was actually hoping to speak with him uh, maybe in... Uh, what is it? Two forward, was it? Yeah, or actually, yeah. We, downtime? we can we can actually transition a few hours ahead if that's uh, what you have in mind. Yeah, unless anyone else has another scene that they want to play out or the like. Yeah, let me let me ask. Anybody have a uh, scene they'd like to nominate? I I do think I should have Droxine apologize to the captain about that thing that happened on the bridge in front of all the other people. All right. Do you want to do it in a casual setting or a, 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 a official setting? Uh, definitely in a ready room. Like this would not be a casual conversation. <laughs> okay. So yeah, let's uh, let's play that out then. That you know maybe some time later, Abasi, you're in the ready room, and a chime at your door later. Uh, Droxine steps in. Uh, Captain, may I have a word? Uh, of course. Uh, Droxine sits down. Um, permission to speak freely, sir. I don't think if I told you no, you would listen to me. Well, uh, that's kind of why I'm here. Um, I don't think you're a great captain. But what I mean by that is that, or what I, what I should attack on to the end, is that I, I think you're the best we've got on this ship. Um, and I owe you an apology. Um, I shouldn't have confronted you on the bridge in front of the other officers uh, when we had the run-in with the uh, NX vessel. Uh, and I regret it a lot. I'm really sorry. Um, I should, that it, it, it should have happened. And I will understand if you would like to put some sort of uh, reprimand in my, in my file or something else, um, or, you know, have me on the train duty for the next, um, well, if we're objective in time, couple of centuries, um, yeah, I, I I apologize, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a a real um, a, a real uh, point to to be supportive and uh, only only mention other options until you've made a decision and not afterwards, <clears throat> sir. You're right. I am not a good captain. I've had no training to be in a command position. It was a fluke of a faulty computer and an overzealous medical officer that put me here. Yeah, suffice to say, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't have the best answers for why we're out here. I don't have the best answers for what we should be doing. Yeah, I, I I don't think your answers are any worse than anyone else's. I think we just need to pick a pick a lane and stay in it, and we're doing a bad job. I agree on that. I uh, anyway, think... I, I hope. Sorry. <clears throat> I 
I think we got off to a bad start, all things considered. Seems to be a pretty common note between me and the rest of the officers on the ship, honestly. Um, you know, have you heard that saying? Uh, you probably haven't, actually. But, uh, you know, you meet one asshole in a day, it's probably them. But if all you meet are assholes during the day, it's probably you. Yeah, it's kind of been like a month of assholes for me. So, um, yeah, I, anyway, I hope you'll accept my apology. I'm going to try and I'm going to try and be better uh, behaved, I guess, is the I just I just really was looking forward to being posted. I'm sorry. I, you know what? I don't want to make excuses. I just I apologize. And that's and that's where I'll leave it. I wasn't supposed to be here either, Druxine. All of this was for me was supposed to be a transfer over to the Bellerophon. You, you have a point of view that's different from mine. I've, I've been giving this some thought. I need somebody to be first officer. Oof. Do you want me to go tell Tavarn to, to get, come in? Cause uh, I mean, if I were picking, actually, uh, you know who would probably really respond well to that uh, is uh, Tamarochka. I mean, she's pretty much adopted that engine room downstairs and made it her own. Uh, I'm I, pretty sure she's set up a nest and she sleeps down there. Yeah, I think she does too, but I don't think she would accept it. And there's a reason I'm bringing it up to you. Uh, I, uh, if you're inferring what I think you're inferring, I... Um, I'm secretly gleeful, um, but I want, I want to, to, why? I, I don't think I command any respect from the uh, rest of the crew. I don't think I command any respect from the rest of the crew other than being acting captain. Well, you, you offer me a viewpoint that I don't see that I may not agree with, but you are offering me valid viewpoints. Huh. Oh. And I think I think you command more respect than you think. Uh, it just sometimes feels like you're not confident enough in in your decisions. But they're good decisions. Are you going to accept? I'm. Hey, if you're gonna if you're offering me the seat on the uh, your right hand, uh, yeah, I'll take it. I mean, I I still get to fly sometimes though, right? Yes. All right, then, uh, yeah, I'm on board. Uh, to a, th thank you, sir. Uh, uh, do, do Cations shake hands? I, I, I don't wanna, I feel like it would be a little too much like the humans having taught their pets. Uh. Yeah. I have to deal with being called Captain Kitty from the doctor enough. If you start with that, I'm gonna take oh, this off her back. No, 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 listen, I'm not, uh, look, I know I look human, but I'm actually Ardanian. Uh, we don't. We never had pets, uh, and I think the whole thing is barbaric. Why would you make another living being your servant? Um, so I, I just didn't want to step on. Like I, I, I have heard you be called Captain Kitty. It sucks. Um, I did. I didn't want to add to that perception. So he's just gonna reach his hand out. Awesome, and then Jonathan will shake it. All right. Is there anything else? First officer. Uh, no, sir. I'll uh, I'll go take my post. All right, dismissed. All right. I think we're now going to transition to two forward, where Captain, you'll arrive eventually. But I think first we're going to deal with Tavarin and Tamarochka. So Tavarin, you know, it's it's sort of late in the evening. Uh, you're sort of minding your own business in two forward when in walks Tamarochka. Uh, you see that she has some fresh new smudge marks on her face because it's Tamarochka. When does she not have smudge marks on her face? And uh, she just sort of notes your presence with a curt nod, goes over the replicator, replicates some steaming mug of something, and uh, sits down with her feet up on the table. And uh, Tavarin is going to be looking up and down at a data pad in his hand. He's 
sort of squirming awkwardly, progressively as this silence drags out on and on. Mm -hmm. And then he throws it down on the table and he looks over to Tamaroshka. So, um, I was right. Right about what? Your little temporal project there that uh, didn't exactly get us where we were going or wanted to go, right? I mean, yes, but we still went through time. I think that this momentous occasion. Starfleet vessels get transported through time every other week. Oh, uh, yes, on accident, but not on purpose. I tell that to James T. Kirk and Scotty. Well, James T. Kirk is James T. Kirk. That man will find ways to time travel to go back and have himself a second breakfast. Let's be clear. <laughs> but I think you're thinking of Captain Janeway, actually. I don't really study Janeway that much. Uh, I, I've seen logs from what she sent back from Delta Quadrant before we left. Not very impressed. 17 separate temporal violations, as I recall. Eh. Kirk had how many? 30-something? 50-something? Picard had, like, five. Five is pretty good for a Starfleet captain, actually. Hmm. What are you having? Oh, this? And uh, she motions at her mug. I, uh, I'm a fan of root beer, actually. It's, uh, it's a, it's a hard root beer, though. It's, uh, it's not a, um, a barbaric uh, swill that uh, people call regular root beer. No, this, this is a hard liquor. Root beer schnapps. Root Sounds schnapps, repugnant. There you go. <laughs> but, um, I suppose we all have our own tastes. Oh, yes. Uh, speaking about tastes, uh, how long are we going to be flirting with one another? Because life is short and you are hot. I don't know. How much longer do you want to go on? I mean, fuck it. If you want to start making out here in 2-4, I'm not going to say no. Somebody might walk in on us. That's going to be awkward. So let's... And because I find it ultimately hilarious, that's when Abasi walks in. <laughs> <laughs> What is that smell? Well, it's probably Tavarin, but uh, hey, Captain, how you doing? All things considered, I think I'm doing all right. Well, um, we'll let you boys talk. I think I've uh, thrown enough curveballs at Tavarin for one day. And uh, she gets up to leave with her mug in hand. And right before she leaves, she says, you know where I sleep, Tavarin. And then she leaves. Abasi just kind of stares from Tavarin, watching Tamarochka as she walks off, and slowly turns back. Do I have to worry about that? Probably. But not nearly as much as I do. Granted. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know what they say, you only live once. How are you doing, Captain? Just hoping that we have a moment to breathe. No. Uh, Abasi's going to walk over towards the replicator and pretty much type in for Arachnogeno. Klingon copy. Very nice. A uh, little shot of blood wine in there. I'll try that. Just adds the blood wine in and brings it, walks over, sits down at the table. And uh, Tavarin actually stares at the captain for just a moment, looks towards the door, rolls his eyes, and then turns back to the captain. Um, I know we're off duty, Captain. Do you, have, do you mind if I speak freely? Go ahead. Like I said, we're off duty right now. Nonetheless, some captains, not that I really know, d don't exactly socialize. I haven't really done a very good job of that so far myself. Socializing or captaining? Both. Well, one of the things that makes socializing easier, and he jerks his head over towards the door where Tamaruchka has departed, is the realization that life is really short. 
Did you fight in the war? I did. Did you lose anyone? The first ship I was on, we were at the Battle of Jintoka. Hmm. Well, the Ushan, my first ship, didn't uh, participate in any major battles, but it was lost. And that's why you have to make the most of every moment. You never know when you're going to meet your last one. I'm trying to make sure that's not what happens to us. You know, Captain, I've always said that Starfleet is a family because that's what my adoptive father taught me. I grew up, you know, on Andoria, raised by an Andorian. And that's why I think that found family is so important. A captain is like a father. His responsibility in the end is to make sure that his crew stays safe. And I think you've done a hell of a job trying your best to ensure that. Because even if we've been beaten up, we're still here. And that's in large part thanks to, <laughs> that seems strange to say because you're about my age, but it's thanks to our father. That is a little strange to hear. Uh, add a little more blood wine to that. It won't sound strange much longer. Before I forget, after getting a little too far into this drink, I would like your input on a project I'm working on. I'd be happy to take a look at it. Can it wait for a few hours? I think it can wait a little longer than this blood wine. Good. Then if there's nothing else, Captain, I'm going to go make the most of the moment. I did not need to hear that. And I think as Tavarn, as you get up and leave, you off screen run into R'hllor and R'hllor says, you're going to what with who? And that's where we'll end today's session. Because that's a great point to end. Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I know, uh, I know that was a little bit combat heavy, but, uh, so to sort of reveal what, what, what was going on there. So the whole point of the temporal warbird was they were sustaining the other warbirds in space. So when you disabled their power, that went away. So they all disappeared. So that was kind of, you guys found the key to the fight accidentally, but it was still very masterful. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah. Cool, cool. All right. Well, uh, YouTube, this is where we say goodbye. But uh, Twitch, stick around because we're going to raid somebody. But uh, YouTube, see you later. Bye, YouTube.